This video was made possible by War Planet Online, the free-to-play MMO real-time strategy game. War Planet Online is a game where you take charge of a world-spanning battlefield and conquer the Earth. Team up with your friends to form allegiances and outmaneuver your opponents in this high-action real-time strategy game. Then use your influence to become president of the world or take over the stars with your very own space station. This game reminds us of some of the strategy games we played in college. If you guys team up in an alliance, it would be game over for everyone involved. Establish your bases, stockpile tanks, troops, and weapons, amass your generals, and lead your nation to victory. Experience the octane of modern warfare from a strategic defense or in close quarters where maneuverability and firepower are key. The kind offered by the powerful weapon featured in today's video, the Phalanx Sea Wiz. Jump into War Planet Online for free today using our link in the description. The Phalanx Sea Wiz. The U.S. Navy's deadly R2-D2. The Phalanx Sea Wiz is a rapid-fire, computer-controlled, radar-guided weapon system designed as the last line of defense for seagoing vessels against incoming threats. It is primarily intended for protection against anti-ship missiles, but is also effective against torpedoes, small boats, and even drones and helicopters. Designed and produced in the United States, the Phalanx has been in service with the U.S. Navy since 1980, and is currently being used by navies of another 20 countries worldwide. In the first two decades of the post-World War II era, naval ships' air defenses were based on anti-aircraft protection only. A new chapter in this field of warfare opened in 1967 during the Six-Day War, when two Egyptian missile crafts sunk the Israeli destroyer INS Elot with Soviet-made SS N2 Styx missiles. The INS Elot was a former British World War II destroyer and had no protection against fast and low-flying anti-ship missiles, or ASMs. The introduction of ASMs in naval warfare called for suitable countermeasures, and the U.S. Navy started working on two parallel projects. One was based on surface-to-air missile systems, and the other was directed to the utilization of rapid-firing guns. The latter project was carried out by the Pomona Division of the General Dynamics Corporation. Their engineers decided to make an automated version of the M163 Vulcan Air Defense System, VADS, used on armored vehicles, and the system was based on a six-barrel 22mm Gatling-type cannon designed by General Dynamics. Only after World War II and the introduction of jet fighters did the technology become available to reintroduce rotary guns into service as anti-aircraft guns. They became the preferred weapons of choice, being more reliable and providing a greater rate of fire. This last feature was essential considering the speed of the jet aircraft they were supposed to shoot down. The project led by the General Dynamics Corporation resulted in the six-barrel 20mm M61 Vulcan rotary cannon with its rate of fire of up to 6,000 rounds per minute. M61 Vulcans were initially used exclusively on aircraft, but were then later modified for use on military vehicles as an air defense system, and ultimately for use on naval warships. The naval defense weapon system based on the M61 Vulcan was designated the Vulcan Phalanx. The name was later shortened to the Phalanx only, with an abbreviation of CIWS added that stands for the Close In Weapon System and is often referred to as CWIS. The M61 Vulcan cannon used on the Phalanx is an electronically controlled, pneumatically driven six barrel cannon firing the 20 by 102 mm round with electric primers. It fires two types of armor piercing rounds one with a depleted uranium penetrator and another with a tungsten or tungsten alloy steel penetrator. The latest version's rate of fire is 4,500 rounds per minute, with a maximum burst of 1,000 rounds. At an angle of 45 degrees, the phalanx's range goes as far as 6,000 yards, or 5,500 meters, but the effective firing range is much shorter at approximately 1,625 yards, or 1,486 meters. If the M61 Vulcan is the system's mode of firepower, then the two radar antennas are the system's eyes. The upper antenna is the KU band Digital Moving Track Indicator Search Radar. It rotates at 90 revolutions per minute inside the barrel-shaped radome and is responsible for identifying the target. In the latest version, the antenna was upgraded with a forward-looking infrared camera, or FLIR, that detects infrared radiation of the target. The lower antenna is an orange peel-shaped KU band Digital Pulse Doppler Mono Pulse Radar used for tracking the target. The Phalanx system, consisting of the gun, antennas, and a magazine drum, is installed on the MK-72 mount, 
It is controlled by the MK340 weapons control panel from the ship's command center and also from the local MK339 control panel. Due to the distinctive shape of the upper antenna ray dome, it has been nicknamed R2-D2 after the Star Wars movie's robot character. The first Phalanx prototype was installed aboard the USS King in 1973, but the full trial only began in 1977 aboard the USS Bigelow. After passing a series of tests, the Phalanx was put into serial production in 1978, and two years later, the first Phalanx Block Zero was installed on the USS Coral Sea. The original version, Block Zero, went through several modifications over time, and these improved versions resulted from new computer technology and the development of anti-ship attacking capabilities. General Dynamics made the first modifications in 1988. The Phalanx Block 1 upgrade had an improved radar and computing system and had also increased the maximum engagement elevation to plus 70 degrees. There was a general upgrade to the ammunition and a significant improvement to the rate of fire, and the linkless feed system was increased from 989 to 1500 rounds to increase the system's capability against Russia's newly developed supersonic anti-ship missiles. The 1996 version, Block 1A, was an upgraded Block 1 with a new computer system capable of engaging maneuverable targets. In 1999, the last version was made, Block 1B. It had FLIR, or forward-looking infrared sensors installed for better identification of surface targets. Apart from these improvements, Block 1B had an increased elevation and speed rate. The Block 1B M61 Vulcan was also improved with an increased barrel length from 60 inches, or 1520 millimeters, to 78 inches, or 1980 millimeters. All present-day U.S. Navy and Coast Guard ships equipped with the Phalanx SeaWiz have a Block 1B Baseline 2 version with an improved radar installed. Each of the latest Block 1B units costs about $12 million each. The Phalanx Sea Wiz is ready to engage when it's been loaded with 1520mm armor-piercing rounds, which are either tungsten or depleted uranium, using a linkless feed system into the ammunition storage chamber, which is then turned on and set to auto mode. The upper radar identifies the target at a distance of 10 miles. It sends information about the target's bearing, range, velocity, heading, and altitude to software and moves the mount in the direction of the target. The computer software first establishes whether the target could be a potential threat, and if so, then decides whether or not to engage it. When the target approaches within a distance of 5 miles, the lower radar locks on the target and starts to track it. The Vulcan engages the target at a distance of 2 miles or less. The system is designed to use the first two rounds to guide the fire towards the target. Because the Vulcan's rounds on the Phalanx have no explosive heads, they destroy the target by either detonating its warhead, known as a hard kill, or damaging the missile airframe and causing aerodynamic disintegration, which is known as a soft kill. The Phalanx Sea Wiz has evolved since the first production series in 1978, but has largely remained the same. It is a fantastic close-in defense weapon for the protection of ships from aerial and surface threats, and has proved its worth more than once, protecting U.S. Navy vessels during the Iran-Iraq War, 1991 Gulf War, and the U.S. War on Terror.